Hello, welcome. Pause the video, try this problem out, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. All right, so first of all, let's, let's, let's look at this. They're saying relative to the graph of y equals 3 sine x. So I'm just going to graph that real quick. Um, let's get my line tool out. Okay, so here we have, let's say, our y-axis and our x-axis. And let's graph that, 3 sine x. So I'm going to mark um, here, do one cycle of the wave, do my best to draw it. Okay. And raise this little smudge right here. Okay. So what just happened? I just drew one cycle of the sine wave. It's not the best cycle, but it's, it's workable. And here is 2 pi radians. That's the distance it takes, essentially, to complete one cycle of the sine wave. Halfway here is pi. Halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2. That gives us our maximum right here. And then halfway between pi and 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, gives us our minimum down here. Okay, so what is the what are the maximum and minimum? Well, traditionally, I guess, excuse me, for the parent wave, I should say, it's 1 and negative 1. But when you multiply by 3, that's our amplitude, our distance from the middle of the sine wave here, and the peak or valley here. When you multiply by 3, um, you essentially stretch, you stretch the sine wave so that it no longer just reaches 1 and negative 1, but 3 and negative 3. And that number, the absolute value of this number right here, matches the amplitude. Okay. Well, then what's going to happen? Well, when we add pi over 3, this any addition to the input of a function, this is for any function, not just sine, not just cosine, any function, you add to the input, it's going to go left, right? So if you add a positive value, it's going to go left by pi over 3 units. But let's make sense of that real quick. So, so what I'm saying is that each of these points here will move to the left by pi over 3. So here, right, we have pi over 2. Let's think about that in terms of thirds, right? Um, how, many, how many thirds is pi over 2, right? How many thirds is pi? If you think of this in terms of thirds, we'll, we'll see how it shifts nicely. So pi, for example, is 3 thirds, OK? So if I take one third away, it's going to go to two thirds. So I'm thinking like one third is about here, two thirds, two thirds, three thirds. So maybe cut this up here and here, one, two, three. So it's going to move from here to here. So I'm going to plot that in red. And then here, two pi, that's an easy conversion, I guess, um, it is the same as six thirds. I'm going to just convert that real quick. I just tripled the top and the bottom. And so 6 thirds is going to move to 5 thirds. So we have 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, 6 thirds. So this is going to move 1 third to the right here. So I want you to see it, and then we'll talk about why this makes sense. And then what about these other points here? Well, this is going to be, if we triple the top and bottom, we get 3 over 6, and then if we divide that by 2, we can see it's 1 and a half pi over, actually let me write this down. So I'm trying to find out, right, pi over 2. I want that in terms of thirds. I'm just thinking, well, if I triple the top and the bottom, right, it's 3 pi over 6, okay. Then if I divide the top and bottom by 2, that's 1 and a half pi over 3. So it's one and a half pi over three. Those are, I'm, I'm getting it pi in terms of thirds here. It's kind of a sloppy way of doing it, but it works, right? So, um, so what that means is if we take one away from this, one pi over three, because we're shifting everything to the left, what would we have? We'd have 0.5 over three. So if this is a third, one third, this is a third, Two thirds, three thirds, badly drawn. Um, if we, if this is one third, if we take away, here I'll write this down. If we take away pi over three, because essentially when you're adding pi over three, you get to subtract everything to the left, and I'll show you why in a moment. Bear with me. You get 0.5 pi over three. So that's half of a third of pi, right? Pi over three would be one third. This is half of that. It's 0.5. So it's going to move from here. 
to here. So this point shifts here. And then, um, although this is taking me a long time, I'm sorry about that, uh, here we can do the same thing and we can shift over 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2. Okay, let's triple the top and bottom. That's 9 pi over 6. But I want it in thirds, so I divide it by top and bottom by 2. So I get 4.5 pi's over 3. Okay, and I'm taking a pi over 3 away. Because again, when you add pi over 3, you're moving everything to the left. You're subtracting it away. And I'll show you why in a moment. Okay, so 4.5 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. So 4.5 pi's minus 1 pi. You subtract those numerators. That's 3.5 pi's over 3. And that makes sense, right? It's just a half a pi past um, right here. Sorry, right here. Half a pi past this. Excuse me, half of pi, half of a third of, <laughs> I'm having a hard time saying it. So it's it's 0.5 pi over 3 to the right of this. Because this is 3 pi over 3. This is 3 and a half pi over 3. So this is a full pi over 3. And it's half of that right here. Right, this would be a full third. Let me mark those. These are our thirds. One third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, and six thirds. So it's halfway between these two, and it's down here, right? Because this point is shifting over. Now, that long drawn out process by me, oh, and this should be back, this is a nice easy one, from zero to negative pi over three. It goes just to the left here. Okay. Just gonna be careful here. So this is what the wave would essentially look like. Everything gets translated to the left by pi over three. What's going on here, right? Why does this work? Well, if we look at this here, um, if, this is a kind of an algebraic argument. But basically, you have x plus pi over 3. Let's say it's the sine wave, so it's the sine of x plus pi over 3. And we want to know why, why does it move to the left, left and not right? Why does that happen? Well, I'm going to say, well, when is the sine wave equal to um, 0, for example? Let's use that as a reference point. It was equal to zero here, right? It was also equal to zero here and here. So, but let's use this middle point as a reference. So it's, when you have the sine of pi, or the sine of 180 degrees, uh, that is zero. That's our reference point. So on this parent function here, sine climbs up, it comes back down, hits zero at pi, and then cycles back down and back up to zero at two pi. So in this function right here, if we were to predict what would happen, we're looking at what this does to the function, x plus pi over 3. So the question is, when does x plus pi over 3 equal pi? Okay, that's the idea. So in other words, if this whole thing was pi, you'd have the sine of pi, and that's 0. So when does that happen? How, look at this equation. When you're solving this equation, what do you have to do? How do you get x all by itself? You have to subtract pi over 3 on both sides. You have to subtract it away. So x is just equal to 1 whole pi, 3 over 3, minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. In other words, when x is 2 pi over 3, right, 2 pi over 3 is x plus pi over 3, that's that's pi, right? You have 2 thirds of a pi plus 1 third of a pi, that's a whole pi. And this function is 0. But wait a minute. That, well, what happened? We reached 0. We reached a value of pi, essentially, when x is 2 pi over 3. Now when x is pi, we got to that, that point sooner. And that's to the left of pi over here. And you can see that leftness happening when we solve the algebraic statement because we're subtracting pi over 3. It's essentially undoing this equation. So if it's plus, in order to solve for the equation, you have to subtract that away. You have to go to the left. If it was minus, you'd have to add pi over 3 on both sides, and everything would essentially move to the right. That's just one way of thinking about it. So I, I, that, I might have, I don't know, I hope this was helpful. I wanted to show you a graphical approach, kind of some sloppy fraction work here. Sorry about that. And then I wanted you to see an algebraic approach. All right, hope that helps.